And without any further ado, let me introduce the film's writer and director, Sabine Benoni. Mike's just behind you there, or we can share this one. We share. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I understand that you've brought quite a few friends with you this evening. Yes. So, uh, yeah, I'll leave it to you to do the introductions. Thank you. Right, well, although we have assembled quite the motley crew, it seems we are missing, uh, it should be noted, the, the key member, uh, Mr. Rick Ocken, who plays, am I pronouncing that right? Probably yeah. butchering it. No? Okay. <laughs> Um, who plays uh, Lucas, and I think that's that's probably where I'd like to start actually, um, just because it is such a stunning performance. It's so authentic, and you never doubt it for a second. So, um, can you talk a little bit about the difficulties of finding Rick? And maybe before you did, uh, was there ever a moment where you were convinced that this could only ever be played by a transgendered actor? Yes, um, uh, well, uh, uh, Rick also says uh, hello to all of you. He, he wasn't able to come because he was uh, working. I was yeah, very happy to find uh, him as the leading, uh, for the leading part. And uh, we had a four month casting process. Um, it was quite a challenge to find an actor for this uh, part. And we also, uh, uh, so it was very clear that I either wanted to have a male or a um, biologically male actor to play the part, and uh, we were also casting in the transgender community. So we, so there were also people uh, coming um, during the casting process, but uh, it was a very, very huge part and a huge challenge in the acting process. So that's why at least uh, I decided for an actor, and yeah, that is, we found Rick. Now, Giles, as the acting coach, it's very rare that we get an acting coach at a Q&A like this. Um, I'm wondering, was your work primarily focused around working with Rick to, to get those, those details, those telltale signs of femininity, or did you actually, in fact, work with the entire cast? Mainly with, with the three main young actors in, in, in the film. And uh, the real task was to get these are two heterosexual young men. You know, so first of all, you have to get them to understand what it means to be a, a, a woman who wishes to become a man. And to that end, uh, Sabina had done a documentary before about uh, people who wanted to trans transition. And they had an institution in Duisburg in Germany, uh, uh, which we visited. So we did a lot of research around what that might mean. And then it was really about doing a lot of exercises to find a way that they can relate to that, you know, to, to find that in their own bodies. And then in terms of uh, Max and Rick, it was uh, really getting them to, to develop a relationship. And of course there are inevitable resistances uh, to that, and so we had to do a lot of uh, improvisations and things like that to get to it. And uh, Sabine, you know, we've seen many uh, male to female performances over the years, but you know, very rarely in cinema the other way around. Um, was this a conscious effort to maybe redress that balance uh, with this film? Oh, yeah, uh, definitely. So um, I, I for myself never, or, or, or not so many films seen that way around. And uh, since I did the documentary during film school, uh, so then uh, I have many transgender friends so, um, and uh, they also said, so they're, they're, they're not feel that, like, that they can connect to characters on the screen. So that was a very clear decision to tell the story that way, to have a main character who is already in the transitioning uh, process, because uh, all of my friends, they said, uh, well, it's mostly, or main much in the film, that um, when the transition starts, the film ends, but I mean, life is starting with this transition, and uh, so this was a very clear decision to tell the story that way around. And Giles, uh, he mentioned your documentary background there. Um, can you talk about how essential that was uh, coming to your first feature and telling this story? For me, it was um, totally uh, essential for that because uh, working on do, uh, doing documentary work is, I mean, the, the great thing to have research as a writer, as a director. I mean, you, you know getting to know people, you um, you get so much more to know about life and uh, 
And also then later for the acting process, it's, uh, I had so many people in mind. I mean, every character on the screen, even the same ones, somehow I met, uh, not 100%, but uh, uh, some people in real life. So and it helps a lot for the acting and for the writing process then that um, that you have really clear the, the, the characterism of, of, uh, of it. So for me, the documentary work is uh, it's a great thing to start and also to develop then the stories. A script like this is it's so unique, you know, they don't come along very often, so I wanted to ask, maybe we can just go down the line and um, ask each of the cast members uh, your initial impressions of reading the script and, uh, you know, what, what drew you into it? Why did you want to make this film? Yes, it's uh, certainly a very unique script. Um, when I read it for the first time, um, I was completely amazed by it. Um, and I've, I mean, I'd never read anything like that before. Neither had I seen anything like that before uh, in German TV or film. Um, and um, yeah, I got really interested in the topic, and uh, it's very well written. The characters are great. Um, and um, yes, I, I decided to do the casting. And uh, can we ask everyone else? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's quite a unique topic, and um, I like the fact that um, I could play somebody who's not just nice <laughs> and this was interesting so um, I wanted to do it because um, yeah. Every, everyone in this movie is a bit prickly though, I don't think there's anyone who's really nice, nice, you know, in this film. No one. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, well um, I have the smallest part. <laughs> oh, 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 don't worry. Well, <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> no, there's only an excuse. And, um, when I first got the call, then you drank cream for a movie, I thought, oh god, not another student project. But then but then I read the script and I thought, oh, this could be something good and important. And I always wanted to be a part of, of, of such a project because I'm I'm a, a part of the community and I know a lot of people. Um, gays, lesbians, transsexuals, everyone. So I thought, well, this this, this is the perfect thing for me to, to, to be yeah, part of, to be a part of. Yeah, I'm very proud of it. <laughs> Great, and so you should be. Um, well, when I uh, read this script, I thought, well, I don't didn't know anything about this topic, really, nothing. And I thought, might be, I really wanted to be in it. To um, and I learned a lot about it, and I think it's a very warm script. It's such a warm, embracing story, and um, it's. When I saw the movie, I I thought, wow, it's really. Um, I want to go out and kiss somebody. <laughs> it's, um, so it, it's it's also a movie that can that can reach me. It's a story that reaches me. And that's what I, I wanted to do that. Yeah, it reached me, and I'm sure everyone else here. I mean, watching it again the second time tonight, I was fascinated uh, by the idea that someone so isolated could then basically broadcast their woes to the world on YouTube um, because they can't find someone to relate to, you know, more <coughs> locally or even in their own country. And it starts off with him speaking English, and, and, and you realise very quickly that there are so many people going through the, the exact same thing that he does, you know, and uh, I suppose that it, it never really feels that way when you're one of those people, is that fair to say? Yeah, it was, um, it was interesting because um, I, 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 since I said I have uh, many friends, transgender friends since years, and uh, but during writing I also started with the research on the internet and found on YouTube millions of clips and I watched for months. And um, yeah, and uh, it was really touched because many, it's kind of an anonymous there, and on the other hand, it's so inti intimate, so private, so they're sharing so much. And, and there was especially one guy, and he was uh, documenting this transitioning process in 80 clips over four years, and uh, from the US, and um, I was watching all his clips, and uh, 
And then I was asking, I was mailing him, and later on we talked on Skype, and I was asking him if I can use some of the lines he was saying in some clips to um, have it later a character speaking it. Uh, so because I, I felt that uh, there was so much sharing, and uh, and they, they said, yeah, sometimes in before the transitioning process, it's really that they can go out. It's sometimes the only way to to share. So uh, and most most of them um, I talked to were, were very lonely, and they said it's much getting better when I mean the body re reacts to the testosterone. Yeah, so that's how I included parts of it. So. And did you get many of these people when you were researching and going through all these YouTube videos? I mean, is there is there actually online a, a huge community and in terms yeah. of the research? So did you get uh, many people not wanting you to use the videos when you contacted them? Well, in fact, I just contacted two. But I said, uh, I don't want to, the one, I don't want to use the footage. Uh, I would like to to use some of the things he said. So and I was mailing him the script in these parts. And uh, and the other one, we, it's just a short thing on, on the laptop. So that's what I was asking. But the others, uh, I, I didn't ask, uh, and I didn't use anything of that. It was especially two, two guys I got in contact with. And we see right at the very beginning, you know, Lucas is injecting th th these male hormones, but of course the whole film and everyone in it, you know, they're dealing with a tsunami of hormones that comes with being a, a teenager. And so, you know, you, you start off and you think this is going to be quite a hard-hitting film and you, and you find yourself actually laughing uh, in recognition, I, I think. So, uh, you know, I'll, I'll put it out to all of you here really, this question. Do you think uh, that it might be fair uh, to call this as much a, a teen comedy as it is a, a hard-hitting uh, romance. I think it's a very, very good, um, yeah, very good um, idea to deliver a topic like this one um, in this kind of way. Because um, same here, I never knew anything really about about, about transsexuality either, and um, which is utterly fascinating to meet these people um, in the in the rehearsal process and. Um, um, yeah, we met them, and um, people in our age and other people, we caught up with kind of the main community in Germany called um, Trans Family, and they were all lovely and so nice and so open to us, and um, um, we met people in our, in our age, actually, and um, they were looking like, yeah, like guys, and they were behaving like guys, and it was absolutely fine. Um, and to your question, um, <laughs> What was I again? <laughs> I just, I just uh, wanted to say this. It's just amazing because I didn't know anything about this, and yeah. that it was a, a teen comedy, or it had a yeah, teen, teen comedy. Yeah, teen comedy. Yeah, it's um, quite a raucous. Yeah. Um, I think, I think it's quite nice to, um, yeah, um, have this comic, comic side in, in, in this film as well, because um, um, you know, it's always kind of tricky with this kind of topic because people people don't know too much about it and it's always some people regard it as a um, taboo um, or um, yeah they just don't know anything about it and it's I think quite nice to um, to kind of um, deliver it in an easy way in an entertaining way um, um, because it shouldn't be negative 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 and um, you know tragic because it's not you know we should we should accept anything, and um, we should be tolerant to anyone. And um, I think it's um, it's it's nice to um, you know watch a film like that and be educated with a smile. And, Sorry. And just just to continue uh, to the question, so that's why uh, we definitely decided to to. Uh, yeah, tell it as a uh, kind of a teenage story. I mean, that's why it's, there's so much skin and bodies and <laughs> yeah, drinking, yeah, drinking and <laughs> smoking. And that's what that's for example what we, we did in the in partying and the acting process, and especially with Giles in, in the acting to find something. The I would always say to Giles the greed for for life and uh, yeah. you know this uh, uh, testosterone hormones everywhere and. and yeah. yeah Advanced sure. class in hedonism. Yes, a lot of people from the studio are going to be here, so they're, they're laughing because they, <laughs> they do it every night. Um, yes, it's everyone's youth, isn't it? Certainly my youth in Essex. 
<laughs> this is actually like that. <laughs> it's the only way, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, when you look at the, the main three characters, I suppose, Lucas, he, he's just trying to fit in. Uh, Fabio is kind of struggling, leading this dual life. But uh, Felix, your character, he, he's definitely one of the more kind of ambiguous, I interesting people in this respect in that, that there seems to be a lot of self-hating sex. What do you think, uh, a lot of self-loathing with this guy, what do you think underneath it all? Uh, what's he really after? <laughs> that rather loaded. Um, well, maybe, maybe it sounds dry, but I really think he just wants to be loved. And so sometimes he fancies um, Fabio and he really wants him. And he knows he's so manipulative and um, he tries to get him, but it never works. And then um, so they never actually. That's, I was wondering about that. Actually, they, they've never actually had uh, any history. No, I thought about it. Well, he knows that I like him, but um, <laughs> somehow I could never get him. And um, yeah, I think it's really. I just want to fit in and to have somebody who loves me, and that's why I'm. Yeah, so terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and as promised, uh, we're now going to talk about the dance floor opera. <laughs> Um, it, th this scene in, in the script, I'm wondering how that read, or how Sabine did describe it to you, the, the, the purpose of, of the scene, being that it's not a student art film, obviously. <laughs> no, obviously not. Um, well, I met with Sabine uh, before filming, uh, well, there was a last minute edition, actually. <laughs> yeah. um, and we met and talked about the situation and the performance, and um, it actually clicked between us. We, we had absolutely the same idea what the feeling is, what, 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 yeah, what my character in the movie really has to do. Um, what is well, the feeling? But well, the feeling is, I just wanted to be something like the good fairy <laughs> in the scene to, to, well, how can I describe it? Um, just to be um, one person who's part of the community who understands the problems, the, the feelings of the youth, um, and really um, sees what was happening there, and just to connect with him and yeah, and, and give him the feeling. Well, it's okay um, to be the way you are. Just, just go for it and. Yeah, and so I, I, I really tried to express that with, with that performance. And uh, did, did you want to talk about that scene also, Max? Because really, if you think about it, at least in my mind, it's kind of really the scene where you know, he recognises his feelings and you know, he's able to reconcile his feelings for Lucas. And, and you, you know, you're playing that silently with just glances. Was it one of the harder scenes to play? It was it was kind of hard, um, definitely. It's so um, crucial, isn't it? Yeah. Um, cause um, yeah, I think in this scene it kind of makes click. Cause um, he kind of tries to fight against his feelings for for Fabio, and um, also he's just he's he's really really interested at some point, and um, he just he just can't believe it that he 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 didn't get that before that he's not like. Because he looks like a guy, he, he, he's behaving like a guy, he is, he's, yeah, black. And, um, yeah, um, that was actually quite, quite a tricky um, scene, and um, we rehearsed that quite a lot, and um, the space itself um, was quite small, it was so hot in there, like, it was literally like in a sauna. Um, and we were quite pressed for time, um, yeah, but... It kind of, kind of worked in the end. Great. Go away. Uh, Are we planning to open this up to the crowd at any point? Right, I'm going to rattle through uh, just two more questions and then, th then we'll do just that. Um, so, in this film also I talked about hard scenes to play. I mean, you kind of spend most of the film naked or semi-naked in the state of undress. <laughs> and uh, the character at least seems so comfortable. H how are you with that on camera? <laughs> 
You better be, because it's the main publicity shot is you covering your nuts with a pair of jeans. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, at some point you get used to it, and... Um, <laughs> you had no choice. Honestly, um, the team and the whole atmosphere on set was just amazing, it was great, and everyone was so supportive, and, and, um, and um, everyone respected each other, and I felt very, very safe on set. And, um, yeah, of course, it's always hard, you know, you to shut your whole clothes off and just, you know, yeah. just, you know, pretend to be, like, completely easy with it and everything's fine. Was it, was it cold on the night? It was you know, that quite nippy, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's why it was covering. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've done it before. Co coaching techniques. Yes, yes. yes. I've I done it before the film, um, so it wasn't my first time. Um, but you can get a reputation of getting get off paint with it. Was it was definitely in a completely different years. context. The other film. Um, um, yeah, but as I said, at some point you just you kind of get used to them. I mean, well, you, you've got to, right? And um, this scene with Lucas and me um, in the at his place um, was also yeah quite um, intimate, but. Um, there was a closed set, so it was only only the two of us and Sabina and um, the DOP in the room. And Giles. And Giles. And um, <laughs> even, <laughs> the, um, the sound guys uh, and all the rest of them, they uh, they stayed out, so it was all like so. So we we really had time and space um, to 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 put the whole focus on our work, and um, yeah, there were not too many distractions really. I mean, with the scene. Um, at the, at the parking space, parking lot, it was, it was in the middle of the night, so at first I thought, hey, okay, it's going to be fine, you know, it's, it's dark and stuff, but then there were the lights and um, <laughs> passes by and, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, as I said, at some point you just get used to it, and um, we got both, both scenes pretty, pretty, pretty swiftly done. Were well, you a pro? Obviously. <laughs> it seems. Two, two, two films, that, 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 that's what they're going to be coming after you for now. Is, 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 so watch out. So, Change. My own I think I'm going to uh, wrap it up where I started actually, in that I said that nobody in this film is nice. And I truly believe that and I admire that. I think it's, it really is an admirable quality in, in that the, the, the main character, you know, he, he, he's a. He's a self-involved, narcissistic arsehole in a lot of ways, you know, because he essentially dumps his best friend after he's transitioned. He says, hey, you know, I'm getting all this, this newfound attention and, and I'm enjoying it. And then, you know, your character, he's, he's, he's quite an outspoken, uh, bit, bit of a bigot, you know, chucking the word retard around a lot. And then <laughs> Felix here, same thing, right? I mean, was that always uh, the, the intention here? I mean, they seem real and prickly and dark, as it should be. Yeah, definitely, yeah. because um, this is life. I mean, we all have different sides, and uh, I feel nothing is... Uh, oh, it's much more interesting to have uh, characters with um, good and bad sides. It would have been and, so uh, much easier to make Lucas like, a martyr, you know? Yeah, but then uh, I, 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 I didn't want people to pity him. Uh, so I want to have him strong with uh, doing mistakes also and being selfish. I mean, this is real. I mean, uh, uh, he has such a strong or uh, heartbreaking journey to do. So that's why he has to fight so so hard and end well, he's dumping his best friend. At the end, well, um, there's a coming together. But no, this was absolutely pretty clear. I didn't want him to be too good. I like it. Are they all going to patch it up? Uh, what, what do we yeah. think? Are they going to patch it up? Be best friends again? Yeah, yeah. that's it's yeah. up to uh, up to everyone to <laughs> yeah. Right, well, in a different way, I guess. Yeah. Speaking of everybody here, I think now would be a good time to uh, open it up to the crowd. So, if any of you uh, have questions for Sabine and friends, uh, you can raise your hand. Do we have? It's about the prosthetics um, for the the nudity there, mm -hmm. I presume. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we used uh, prosthetics. So um, working with a special effect uh, makeup uh, artist in Cologne, and um, because um, uh, we where we had the, the actors, so we had to build everything and to stage everything. Yeah. So and because uh, I knew from the from from my friends, so I wanted I needed or wanted to include 
or the um, things relate to the body, so it, also the sweat, I mean, they are going to puberty and and um, space, uh, well, this was real, the, the, the hairs and things like that. So this was clear, I, I, I needed to, I wanted to work with body, and uh, so that's why we did this. Yeah. Also, we had um, two, two girls, they were amazing. They, they really knew what they did. Um, they, they created these um, fake breasts uh, made of silicone, and um, the actor who plays Lucas is, is a guy, and um, you know, no, normal guy, but he played someone who was born as a girl. So um, they created this fat suit for, for his hips, so that he would, you know, re literally look like, like um, you know, he used to be a girl. And then um, maybe you noticed that when he was running and stuff, he was, he, he was wearing these, like, Fat suit, second boxer shorts, kind kind of things. <laughs> yeah. So I think we have time. Unfortunately, maybe only for one more. So if someone's going to be brave and make it a good one. Oh God, that's pressure. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. We're all friends. We're all friends here. <laughs> that's a great question. Yeah, absolutely, uh, and it's absolutely the point during writing. I I really uh, have been playing every moments through my mind, which could be the situation Fabio finds out. And I was kind of mind mapping the whole wall in my room with um, little cards and everything. And uh, I had also one version, um, uh, different versions and uh, different situations. And, but I decided to, to play it that way uh, around uh, because um, uh, to uh, because that's also in life so much that you want to hide something and there's someone just plapping and oops, it's out. Uh, uh, the, the innocence of youth, though. Pardon? You, you, it's the innocence of youth. Yeah, and yeah, it's the innocence of youth, you, and uh, that's a child. Yeah. The girl didn't know. Yeah, and, and the girl doesn't have any problem with it. Exactly. So it's, 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 uh, yeah, I mean, this so is the girl she has been corrupted into yeah. a normal human being. And, and it's so much about society, because <laughs> if you would let the children decide, they won't see any problem or, or something. So that's why also a reason to um, write it with a little sister. So, and uh, in fact, I had in the script, uh, at the beginning and at the end, I had in the beginning, uh, I had the family arriving at the, at the dormitory. So. Uh, we cut it out later, so that's why there's only one this scene uh, left. So I, I was thinking it uh, different in the, in the script, but um, I thought, okay, it's only for itself because, yeah, because of this point. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sabine, for coming down and bringing like, like, so many people to represent Romeo. So it's really impressive and it's great <laughs> on, on an opening night. So uh, if everyone would join me. And thank you everybody, have a great